it's Linda from Lanyos Handmade. Welcome to the Gemma Bag Sew Along. This is going to be part one. We are going to prep our fabric today and we're going to uh, put in a zipper pocket and of course we have to do the measurements for it. And then we're going to trim some zipper tape and install the zipper pull. Thanks for joining us. So these are our pattern pieces. Um, this is the lightweight lining. I think this one's shape flex and then there's some pattern pieces that you measure out inches right for the strap and the body so those get measured out separately um, this would be like a, the lining for the body and it gets measured out in inches there's got to be another piece in here for that somewhere <laughs> and uh, so basically some of the pieces you measure out and other pieces are an actual pattern piece and you stick that together I'm sorry I didn't get the whole piece on one page but it's a big piece so you stick it together on the dotted line and then you can cut your pattern piece out um, I just used ordinary thread for my bobbin and the top of my machine and I used universal needles and I'm trying a 10 on this because um, it says 1070 on here because I think some of the corners are going to be really thick to go through but we'll see um, I'm going to go get some fusible fleece and put it on the body the two body pieces the front and the back that I have measured out the, the ones that will look like this and um, that way this fabric bag will have a bit more weight because on its own it's kind of floppy okay so the first thing we have to do after we cut everything out, is we're gonna go fuse, if we're using fusible, fuse our pieces together, and then I'm gonna zigzag around so that I make sure they stay. So I've gone through the whole list now of what we need, and let's just run through it again. This is, I've written it on the back, it's the top front, and it's my solid color. And I've zigzagged it and I put little notches in the straight edges. I'm not bothering with notches here, but this I will. So this is the top front. This is the top back. I've marked it. You might not be able to see it because it's really faint, but it too has a little notch up here right in the center. Then after it talks about solid gussets, and I've got lots of solid pieces, strips cut here. So I'll put them aside for now. Then when it comes to the print fabric, I've got, this is my bottom, I can't read it myself, bottom back. So let's look at in order. This is my bottom front of my print. And then comes in order, here's my bottom back. And these two on the straight edges, I've put little notches. And then I've got a gusset for this too in my print. And then after I've got strap pieces which were included in this pile. I haven't cut out D-ring tabs yet or zipper tabs. This is all the fabric I have left so it's going to be more than enough for what I need. So the D-ring tabs and the zipper tabs haven't been cut yet. Um, now next comes, this is the bottom front, somewhere in here. I think, what does that say? Front, yes. And all these four corners have little notches cut in them. And I make sure the notches aren't more than the half inch seam allowance. And this is going to be the back. Yes, I've got back written on it. And it also helps to mark what's the top of your pieces. So there's the little notches again. And this is the next piece. This is my zipper pocket lining. I didn't mark that because it's kind of obvious, but I probably should just to be on the safe side. Zipper pocket. And this is going to be my slip pocket. And this is not cut perfectly right. I have to cut along here yet. Or I could leave it attached and just 
sew it with the opening and turn it. But when we get to it, we'll see what happens. So make sure all your pieces have the notches and a label on them, on the back. And then that helps when you go through too. Now I've got all my, this is a lining. This is a pocket and lining and this is a lining and I've put them all together. These are the first things we're gonna work with. We're gonna put the zipper pocket in the back and the slip pocket on the front. So I will keep those here. These ones we don't quite need yet, but I've put all the front pieces together. Top front, bottom front, bottom front pocket, and bottom front. And they're all pinned together. I'm gonna to put them aside, we don't need them yet. And this is our top back and our bottom back. And we don't need those yet either. But as you can see, those are gonna to come together like this. This is facing me, but there, that'll be facing you. So that's how the back of the bag is going to look. I'm glad the lips came out there and it'll be sewn together. So we shall keep these pieces together. I'm going to check one more time if I've got notches on all the straight edges. And I'm going to also put aside my fabric for my zipper tabs and my strap and my gusset because we don't need that yet neither. We're just gonna start with our pockets and our lining. Now let's take a look see at our zipper pocket to start with. This is our slip pocket, this is our zipper pocket, and this is going to go into our back. Although the back and the front is exactly the same, but you know, just because I wrote the label on, let's use the proper label. So I'm going to put these pieces away and I'm going to keep my zipper pocket and my back. So this is the top and I do like to know which is the top so I'm going to put a real definite little mark. There's T for top and center. And on this we are going to measure just like it says here, we're going to measure. The center is 5.5. We know that already because we just marked it. 5.5. And down from the center, we are going to come two inches. So if this is your center line, this is your two inches. I'm going to get my little chalk here. If you use chalk, you can rub it off afterwards, but if you're worried that it might not come off, we can always do it on the other side. Depends on what kind of markers you have. So this is two inches down. There's gonna be a big, huge line here, center. And I'm gonna make sure it's level all the way across because I'm going to line it up nicely here. So that's lined up with the edge and that's moved up and I'm going to go across and I'm going to make this seven inches long. So from the half, I really would like to have it from there. This is at the half mark. So that's 12. Seven is three and a half one way and three and a half the other way. One, two, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. So we're just going to mark this. So this should end up being seven inches across. With the three and a half in the middle. If you can't see your, uh, your marks, you can always put them in just a little bit darker. I'm using a pen here, living dangerously. And that's gonna be the box that we sew. 
and this box is going to be one and a half inches wide. So we're going to line up again and do one and a half inches this way. I'll use a pen so you can see it better. And let's go this way, seven inches. Come on, I'm scared to press. So there's our seven inch box. We can check it. Yep, seven inches. Seven inches right in there for a zipper and two inches down. Two inches down and and this, of course, is right in the center, five and a half inches on both sides. So that's the box that we're going to have on our back. When it comes to this one, this definitely, I don't, I don't want to write on this side because um, we're going to fold it in and that edge will show. So I'm going to do the same thing here too again. I've already got the center marked with a little notch. Let's just check and see how accurate it is. It's supposed to be four inches for the center. So this little cut I've got here is slightly bigger. See, instead of eight inches, it's about eight and a half. That doesn't matter much. I like to live dangerously. So I'm going to make this work and I'm gonna draw my line one inch down from the center. Just as long as I'm coming from the center, everything will be fine. My one inch down, and I want to have three and a half inches, just like before, because I want the same sized box. So three and a half across, make sure it's lined up. There's for my seven inch zipper. Three and a half on one side, three and a half on the other side. And it's going to be a half inch wide again. And I'm going to draw the ends here. Really helps to have a, a nice ruler with markings on it. So this is a seven inch box. Yep. So this again is seven inches. And instead of being two down, it's only one down. And it's in the center. Whatever your center is. This one happens to be four and a quarter. If you cut yours out correctly, I added a half inch on mine it will be the center of four. And I'm sorry I'm using inches, but the centimeter measurements are on there too. So now for our next step, we are going to put one of these on top of the other. You have your top and your top, and these are not like this, because then the boxes won't line up. But you know, this one was about two inches down and this one is one inch down. So we can estimate where it's gonna go, but ultimately we have to poke a pin through and make the boxes line up. And this is how I do it and it's really weird, but uh, it seems to work. So let's poke it in. And there it is on this side. Now let's do the other side. I um, I don't like marking on the right side of the fabric, so I always end up doing this silly little pokey pin thing to get it through. But once I can see the corner is here and the corner is there, I know I'm halfway done. Then I poke it through to the other corner and back to this corner again. And that corner is done. So it's supposed to sit between those two points. And you can see on the other side, the pin is pretty much hidden even between the two points. Let's line up here and make sure that the center is lined up.
There, so the center's on the line. And again, yep. Yep, good. So now we're gonna sew around this box. So here, I've sewn it on. And I'm gonna go press it. And cut it open next, right? Um, I sew to the very tip corner and I put the needle down and then I turn with my foot up, I turn the fabric. So that's how you get a sharp corner in here. So when you're cutting it too, you cut as close as you can to that stitch, really close in there. And that's how you make sure that your corners come out as corners and not as curved because sometimes people have really curved uh, zipper boxes. So to start with, I'm going to get a good pair of scissors and just make a hole. There you can see it. And I'm going to be very careful going up into the corners, but right now I'm just going to go to about here. All right. Because I want to go into the corner, but I don't want to cut the corner. And I like sticking my hand underneath so I don't cut anything else too. When it comes to the corners, you do it as if your life depends on it. And cut as close as you can without cutting that thread. Right in close. So that it's going to be easy to tuck it through. Now some people have said that all they do is sew this top line and this bottom line and they don't sew this line. So that they find that's an easier way to make sure that they get a nice corner. I haven't found a problem with doing it this way, sewing it all around. So um, now I'm going to go press it and see how it looks. And if it doesn't look any good, you know, maybe it's a bit tight still. I'm going to snip away just a bit more at it. And the other thing I should mention, um, when we are pressing it, we pull it through. So eventually we want it to look like this, but we want it all pressed. Okay, so here's my zipper box all pressed. Both sides turned out okay. Um, sewing the zipper in will hold it down. I also folded this in half and pressed it too just so I wouldn't have to get up again. So let's work on our zipper. I found this. I'm not quite sure where it came from and I'm going to put this black zipper pull on it. I snip this off and first I'm going to push the fabric through. You can see already I pushed this one in first. Now I've got the two fabric ends and I'm going to pull and that will stick it on. Then I can cut this off after and I can sew across here to put a zipper stop so it doesn't fall off again. Let's mark where we want to have some overhang here and overhang there. And where am I going to cut it? And that's what my zipper is going to look like. These are plastic, so they're easy to cut. So next I'm going to zigzag little zipper stops at the ends. And then we can use Wonder Tape to attach it. And to sew this zipper in, I'm going to get this lovely little foot here. This is my stitch in the ditch foot. I don't have very much space here, as you can see. Um, I'm very close to the edge. So the wonder tape is going to go on the very edge. And this is going to sew it on. And uh, I have to remember my needle position with this one too, because it has to go all the way to the left to fit in this little hole so that it can sew. But for first thing first, let's put the zipper stops in. Okay, so Wonder Tape. I have the zipper stops on here, so it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, let's put some on the other side too, just for the fun of it here. And we'll 
peel it off a little bit. Peel it off this side. And we're going to fit this under here. Takes a little bit of fiddling around, but we'll get it eventually. And we can always fine tune it. Does that look zipped up? Not bad at all. So I'm going to sew this in now with my stitch in the ditch foot or edge foot. And um, it's going to go really close to the edge. I have to be careful on the corners with this foot because it's got a guide that sticks out. So I kind of lift the foot up and wiggle it around to get it past those lumps. Okay, we've got our zipper sewn in. I had to, uh, like I said, lift the foot to get the guide up on this when I turned this corner. And I also kept the needle down and uh, lifted the foot up to turn the corner. So it was a little bit of maneuvering. Um, I had to lift the foot up and keep the needle down so I could slide the zipper full past. Um, otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that. Now on this side, we just check and yes, we didn't mess up anything. It's all sewed down. There's no problem anywhere. So now we fold this up and pin it. And we're just going to zigzag and sew this piece only. There's other ways to do zipper pockets too, but I find this the quickest and the easiest way to do it. So we're just gonna pin this and I sew it with maybe a quarter inch seam allowance and a zigzag too to help hold it. And then after that's done, we'll be finished with the zipper pocket. So sew here, there, and there. But I like doing it this way. Oh, a little bit crooked. I like doing it this way so that I don't sew any of my linings in. Okay, there it is. I'm probably going to press it one more time, but this back of this lining is finished. Um, I had a weird thing happen. I couldn't change my thread. I couldn't get it through the needle hole. So um, I changed the needle and the next one worked fine. For some reason, my uh, automatic threader wasn't going through the hole. Maybe the needle got bent, but anyway, sometimes if you change the needle, it, it helps out. So here is the pocket. There's the zipper. The other side, I've zigzagged it and I stitched it only together. Um, by the way, you can make this pocket as big as you want. This is the size of this one. This was about a six inch piece of fabric, but if you used, you know, you could even make it three extra inches, actually six. So instead of 12, make it 18 inches long and you could end up with a pocket that goes all the way down here, really deep. But this is this side finished. So now we'll do our slip pocket side. This technique can be used to easily add a zipper pocket to any bag pattern. Um, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for part two. And don't forget to subscribe and like.